organized uh, by SkinOps and uh, in collaboration with uh, four companies, Proderm, Biox, CIDP and Newton. And today we will focus on the evaluation of the skin hydration. First of all, I will just uh, give you the summary of uh, this uh, webinar. Mr. Stefan Bielfeld, Vice President Science and Consulting of Proderm, will speak about the measurement of hydration. Then uh, Laurie uh, Cerotti, Customer Support Manager of Biox System, will present you the Epsilon uh, device with the skin hydration measure wand and the power of the filter Epsilon. Then, Annie Jane, Scientific Director of SciDP, uh, will present skin hydration and give an overview of most commonly used methodology in ex vivo and in vivo models for claim substantiations. And uh, finally, Elodie Prestamarki, Operating Officer of Newton, will present a digital clinical image analysis for hydration assessment and innovative data mapping. Just as a reminder, there is a Cosmeto test organized in collaboration with Cosmetin Lyon. It will be uh, in May, dedicated to preclinical and clinical testing. And uh, there will be a next uh, uh, symposium next year in 2023. There will be another fo focus live part two about uh, hydration evaluation on the 15th September. And then you can uh, already uh, find all the information about uh, hydration in the focus five, uh, the panel of discussion with searching experts. Then we are conducting a study market and the presentation will be held on 16 June. It's a global survey on the clinical testing market for the beauty industry. Just to remember that uh, in the platform you can find uh, information about uh, the evaluation of the hydration on the skin, on the clinical platform, on Vivo Human, you can find 37 methods, 15 mechanisms, 18 measurement devices, and 98 testing labs in uh, 34 countries. And for the preclinical platform, you find 38 tests with eight mechanisms of action, 12 biomarkers, and 30 testing labs in seven countries. So I will just show you the way you can find the, the information in the preclinical uh, testing platform. Just select the number seven, efficacy. Then you select the claim, moisturizing, and hydration. You can also see here there are several mechanisms of action where you can find moisturizing claim. So you can select what you, the one you like, and then you can see the several endpoints that you, you can be related to uh, moisturizing. And here you have other menu. Here you can find the countries, here the, the testing labs, and the types of support also what you like to do. And uh, when you have the list of results, you find the several uh, providers here, and you can select them and send them directly uh, a question. Then for the, for you can see also in the news feed uh, uh, with a little uh, uh, search engine, you can select uh, moisturizing and you find all the articles related to, to this evaluation. For the clinical, you select three for the biometrological test and facial care and then moisturizing. And here you find all the, the way to evaluate the hydration. Is it uh, uh, with the collagen density or is it by uh, uh, the hydration of the stratum corneum or is it by the structure and molecular composition of the skin? You find all the device here. And here you can select the type of subject, you can select the degree of technology of the techniques, you can select the countries, and also see the device manufacturer. If, for example, you like to see what exists for Biox system, you can select directly Biox system here, and we, you find all the, the their device, and here the 18 laboratories that are using their, their device. You can do the same for Newton, for example, in the device manufacturer's menu, and then you can find all the device offered by Newton, the type of method, and also for what claims. And after, you can see the zero uh, uh, corporate. You can find all the methods also here. 
what they propose for Biox and the device manufacturer you find their uh, device here, their uh, localization also for CIDP, it's the same. You find us their localization and you can click here and see what they are. And then uh, for uh, Newton, it's the same. We can select here directly in the supplier directory, select Newton here, and then see what, what device and where they are located. So that was my presentation. Now I am glad to uh, introduce uh, Stefan uh, Wilsfeld. Hello, and Hello. I'm happy to can speak here. And I see a lot of people already here and uh, great uh, that I can present. So Stefan has a degree in uh, bioengineering. He's vice president size and consulting at Proderm in Germany. He's responsible for the development of new skin research method as well as the consultancy of customers in the field of clinical studies, design, and methodology. Stefan has been working in clinical research for more than 30 years, and the special field of his expertise are photobiology, sun protection, in vivo confocal Raman spectroscopy, and clinical studies of skin microbiome. His list of publications contains more than 100 scientific publications, and he is a member of professional societies such as the Society of Dermopharmacy and of scientific working groups of the German Society for Scientific and Applied Cosmetics, and as a member of the ISO TC working group, Sun Protection Test Method, he works on the international standardization of sunscreen testing method. Please, Stefan. Thank you. I hope you, everybody sees my screen, yeah? Yes, it's Wonderful. perfect. Yeah. So from all what I did in the past, uh, hydration is also, was always and all the time a big topic also because for the cosmetic industry, skin hydration is really a very important uh, topic and uh, measurement uh, of it is crucial to do it in vivo. So. Uh, let me shortly uh, explain what I'm going to speak on today. I will give a bit of background, general aspects uh, to hydration measurements because a lot of uh, things are required to do good measurements. I'm going to visual imaging of dry skin or moisture skin, uh, go to uh, devices uh, like uh, or measurement methods like capacitance and transepidermal water loss. Then I go shortly to moisture imaging because that is presented in the next uh, um, presentation much more in detail. And then I will speak about water measurement with a confocal Raman spectroscopy in vivo. So let's start with the uh, background a bit. So uh, skin moisture is, uh, is finally uh, depending on the water in the skin and uh, the skin is in direct contact with the air. So the air has temperature and humidity and this is clearly influencing the, the results and, and therefore it has to be controlled well. And it is not only the temperature and humidity in the room where you measure, it is season. So we know uh, that uh, winter in winter especially we have this uh, phenomenon of cirrhosis, meaning dry skin due to the dry air inside the building. It's not outside, it's because we're heating our buildings, therefore we have the winter cirrhosis because the air gets very dry inside when you heat the rooms in winter. Then we have the uh, the whole outdoor climate and, and this uh, the, the outdoor climate, uh, um, let's say the last uh, four weeks can influence how the moisture, the, the let's say the natural moisturization of, of the skin is. So it cannot be all controlled therefore. And for, for that you have, uh, you need to control with uh, let's say standard products and other untreated areas and something like that. And of course it is, it can be completely, uh, the, the measurement can be completely go wrong if you have sweating, let's say perimenopausal, hot flashes or something like that, that always happens and this data is then not good. 
So what we do usually is we have at least 20 minutes climatization and we work at a standardized uh, temperature of 21 degrees and 50% of relative humidity in the measurement room. So uh, there are especially two aspects how one can test. There's the so-called kinetics, meaning you apply once and look how the moisture changes by the treatment from baseline and over the next hours. And there's the second approach with a study uh, over a several time of home in use application. So let me say the, the kinetics is good to explain Law candidates of moisturizing products to see uh, what they do directly to the skin. But this is, of course, clearly influenced. Uh, if you measure after one hour, you have the product still on and in the skin. And so the ingredients could, uh, which are there can uh, influence the moisture of uh, uh, what you measure. And, and therefore, usually for good claim support, you need always uh, studies over two or four weeks uh, to, to measure really, uh, let's say, something like a long-term effect of moisturization. And uh, so uh, we then wait uh, and have the last application the evening before and then look on the next day after 12 and up to 24 hours, how is the moisture kept? And uh, this result shows you what is, let's say, if you apply twice a day, then then the 12 hours, well, you would say, say to you, is there still a moisturization effect lasting over the whole day? Because then you reapply, but uh, if you measure after one hour, uh, this is easy for almost every uh, product to uh, give a bit of moisture to the skin. OK, coming to the, let's say, more general methods, uh, imaging, visual imaging, uh, capacitance measurement and uh, TWL. This is the imaging and I think this is uh, the most important because if you score clinically what is dry skin, it is the visible image of flaking. And if you look to this dermatoscope image here, you see what what flaking means so uh, the the desquamation the the, uh, the the skin cells with which are shed the corneal sites which are shed are shed in clusters so the the there's a um, a whole bigger flake with hundreds or thousands of cells is detached partly and below there is air and because there's air in between you have this whitish look of the dry skin. So this is, of course, a very strong uh, cirrhosis already, but in principle, it's the same. What you see as skin dryness is mainly this flakiness on the skin uh, with a half detached uh, clusters of corneocytes where the, the air is below. So capacitance measurements, I, I, I don't speak of water measurements because this is wrong. So capacitance is really a measurement uh, of uh, an electrical measurement. Yeah. And um, so here you see the, the, the typical corneometer and it is not measuring, of course, water. It is it's measuring really the, the electrical um, action of the skin and this is influenced by water but also by other uh, ingredients uh, if they are still on the skin and uh, on the right side i have uh, the aqua flux shown it's a closed chamber system so the tewl the transepidermal water loss you want to see how the water evaporates from the skin and this can be done with an open chamber but if you blow into the chamber or the volunteer blows into the chamber then you have a, um, a wrong result and the closed chamber would be the best but usually it takes a bit longer to measure but this is the, to us this is one of the most precise measurement methods here so 
what what is typically measured when we measure evaporation? Usually you have two phenomenon. They could uh, interact also the skin surface water loss. This can is simply the, the water which is on the surface and in the upper layers of the skin. And uh, so it is in sweating there or the moisture of products which evaporates. And this is completely a different thing. So the TWL, this this has to do really uh, with uh, how the barrier functions. So the water which, which is really transported across the, the epidermis uh, and the stratum corneum. And uh, it is, um, uh, so the, the less is, uh, is coming up, the better. Better. So, uh, so here less is better, but in moisturization more is better. You want to see the moisture which evaporates. So uh, important that the uh, that the device doesn't discriminate the two. So you you have to discriminate by having a good test design. In the capacitance, I said already, it is the the capacitance of electrons dislocated into the horny layer and the more which could be dislocated in the horny layer the more moisture you have but you don't measure the water we the good thing is we have a correlation of this clinical skin dryness which i showed the flakiness on the skin and uh, the uh, the corneometer values this is true if we have don't have the product still uh, in larger amounts in the skin. If we have a lot of glycerol in the skin, this is then a bias because we also measure the glycerol. Coming shortly to moisture imaging. So this is capacitance measurement with a lot of sensors. So, so you get an imaging of that. And you see already, um, this uh, two centi square centimeters area is, let's say, uh, giving uh, 76,800 uh, moisture or uh, capacitance measurements. It is also nice uh, because one see kinetics, a film like that. So here we leave the, it, it is a time lapse. So the the, the, uh, there's no product on. It's simply we have occlusion because we put uh, the device on. The window makes occlusion. And uh, what is getting lighter here is the accumulation of water uh, in the skin by the occlusion. So this could also be then if, if you have sweating, antiperspirants, you see the single sweat glands with the water and so on. So there are a lot of applications which go further than only measuring moisturization. They, therefore, you can also use the general devices. But this is especially if you want to see where is the moisture and uh, where is it coming? Where are the sweat glands and these uh, topics? But this also correlating well with the corneometer. We checked that. Now I come to the, for us, uh, maybe most uh, sophisticated and and best method because this is really water measurement in the skin in the stratum corneum with the confocal Raman spectroscopy. So uh, that is the device. You have um, a Raman spectroscopic uh, device. You can put the skin on, not only an arm, you can measure in the face, uh, on the legs, on the back. So the holder makes the difference. So every, th every skin area you can put onto this little window here can be measured. And so we have measured almost every uh, part of the human body. I show you an example at the end of this presentation. So this is a, a with two types of lasers this uh, device is equipped. What we use for water measurements is the high wave number regions and one spectrum takes only one second so we can make a lot of spectra and you can really um, go across the skin. So how is it done? You see it here. The laser from below is focused into the stratum corneum here, and at every point it makes a, a Raman spectra. This point here, this point there, and so on. Deeper and deeper, and the resolution is quite nice. It's only 
three microns around in the in the best. So you have really a lot of measurements across the stratum corneum. It can go down even to dermis, so 300 microns as well. That's the upper dermis, and uh, but but here we are more uh, dealing with the stratum corneum with the moisture in the stratum corneum. How can that be measured? So you have in, in this uh, high wave number, you have mainly two peaks. The one is the water peak here, and the other is the protein peak, the carotin of the skin. And if you put that into relation, you can say this amount of water in terms of so this percentage of water compared to the amount of protein. So you have a really um, percentage measurement of water across the stratum corneum. And how does that look like? Here you see it. It starts usually at, uh, at a range of 25% uh, of water in the outer layers. So outside the skin is very dry. The drier it is, the less can evaporate and the lower is the TWL. And then it's going slightly up. So first, it is almost no uh, linear function because here the, the outer five microns, that is usually the stratum disjunctum, which has is flaky and the barrier is broken. So these uh, here, the, the last two dots uh, are usually uh, could be a, a bit at random uh, or differently and not on the line, but then where the barrier is working, so there's a steep increase. And at the end of the stratum corneum, the curve is flattening out into the living uh, skin, and then we have about uh, 65, 70% of water already. So it's highly high water content. So what to do with that? How could it be translated into uh, moisture uh, or uh, to assess moisturizer effects. So the two things are usually found. If we look at short-term occlusive products, let's say we put petrolatum or a, a, a fatty cream on the skin, which makes a, an, has an emollient effect, so an occlusion, usually you get really more water in the stratum corneum. The stratum corneum really swells, and so this area here under the curve, the stratum corneum is, is getting higher. So the good thing is, you see here, here's the border of the stratum corneum. It can be exactly measured by taking this line and the line in the uh, epider in the living epidermis and where the two meet cross each other exactly here is the thickness of stratum corneum so you can measure uh, where it is and if you have a thickening of the stratum corneum by swelling like here you see that the stratum corneum moves so it's thicker so that that would be the emollient effect it's it can be reached short time if you have occlusion but for let's say the, the good products should have a long-term effect. And here we, we have uh, the results uh, pointed out from a moisturizer with a glycerol. But the glycerol is, of course, already away. So we measured uh, the, 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 the next day only after application and the evening before. And uh, what happens is typically two things. You get here a lower result in the uh, lower water content in the uh, outmost part of the stratum corneum because here uh, you have an extra barrier effect let's say in in the outer layers by the products and this means less evaporation also and this gradient is much steeper it's getting steeper and usually the stratum corneum gets thinner because it is not that it moves from here to here. The truth is that the outermost part, the flaky part is going away. So the skin becomes flakeless uh, and, and then is also getting slightly thinner. 
And they're, they're, these two effects are the, the typical moisturizer effects. So it is not, uh, not you have more water in the skin, because if you have more water in the skin, you have more evaporation. It The, the, the whole important thing is a good function of the barrier and low evaporation, and then the skin is free of flakiness and the clinical dry skin is not anymore existent. So it is a different paradigm of what we can see and what, what is really uh, good, well moistened skin. Okay, let's come to the experiment uh, scalp dryness. It can also be measured with Raman spectroscopy, as you see here. So we have equipped the device with a with a bench where the uh, volunteers lay down on a head holder, rest on a head holder, and the device is on a table which can be moved up and down. And you see here how uh, how uh, the area can be measured by moving the device up to the spot and as the beam the laser beam is only one micron and we see from the microscope window where we measure we can go uh, pass through across the the hairs and not touching any hair measuring only the scalp and not the hair so the hairy scalp is not uh, we have not to shave or anything we could directly measure and you see here how we have applied this uh, this area here. We have used a shampoo uh, on on this area and then measured again. So you can measure before, after. And what did we measure? We we looked at the drying out effects here of a standard shampoo uh, of a 10% uh, L'Oreal ether sulfate shampoo. And we did three washings of one minute. So this is really a challenge already. And you see here what we measured. We measured the natural moisturization factors with Raman in the skin. And you see it was almost co completely washed out. So here you can really assess how a shampoo, uh, how strongly a shampoo is uh, extracting uh, the moisturization factors of the skin. And so the milder, the less. So here in this harsh experiment, almost everything was washed out. So a good product should should not do it so much. A shampoo, which is mild, should do less. And also here for the ceramides, free fatty acids, we also have a, a clear reduction. So the moisture was also here clearly reduced. So let's put it together. Uh, the, the moisturization studies need good practice and experience. It's not so easy just by an instrument and measure. Um, yeah. And uh, so skin moisturization can be well measured also with Raman confocal microscopy. And there we really measure the water. All other measurements are not measuring water. And especially if we look at the skin owned molecules like NMF and barrier lipids, we get really the chemical composition of the skin, which uh, which has the influence to skin dryness and moisturization. OK. Thank you very much, Stefan, for this great presentation with this nice overview. Thank you very much. And uh, I will introduce you, uh, Laurie uh, Siortea from Biox. Hello, Laurie. Um, Laurie joined uh, Biox in April 2006 as customer support manager, including sales, marketing, and contract research. And after a few years, she took on an increasing role on, and her responsibilities included customer support, manufacturing, purchasing accounts, stock control and dispatch. And since February 2022, Laurie's role has changed and now she is the scientific coordinator for Biox System. And this new position allows her to dedicate her time to more science-related tasks. Lori has a degree in physics from Babes Bolai University, Klux no uh, Poca, Romania, and previously worked as a research scientist at the National Institute for R&D. She had qualified for PhD at the home of Aquaflux, the Skin Bioengineering Research Center of London South Bank University. 
Thank you very much, Laurie, and uh, I let you uh, share your presentation. Hello, everyone. So today I'll present the, the title of my presentation is Epsilon Skin Hydration Measurement, the Power of the Epsilon Filter. I'll start with a short introduction of the, uh, of the instrument. So the, this is the Epsilon. And the epsilon is an instrument for mapping near surface dielectric permittivity of materials in contact with its centric surface, which is this sensor. So basically, epsilon needs a semiconductor fingerprint array sensor, and it has 76,800 uh, individual capacitance sensor, sensors. And the capacitance is known that depends on the dielectric permittivity. And we call the, uh, the, this instrument Epsilon because, in fact, it measures the permittivity. Uh, it also uh, provides, uh, provides both uh, image and hydration simultaneously, and uh, it's suitable for uh, both in vivo and in vitro measurement. And the uh, sensing depth is about 20 micro, uh, 5 microns. It used, we used to say, in fact, 20 microns, but um, a couple of years ago, one of my colleagues, Bob Inhoff, who uh, was um, the chairman of, the, of this company, retired, and he did some, uh, some measurements and he concluded that the depth penetration is 5 microns. So, uh, basically, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, um, Epsilon uh, measured changes in um, in permittivity and capacitance is a device property while permittivity is a material property. And uh, we also um, calibrate our instrument for uh, air and water. And so here you have a, a diagram which shows the uh, fingerprint sensor um, grayscale, the signal, and uh, also we, uh, we show the um, the epsilon uh, signal, which is uh, uh, which is linear now, and uh, also, as I said, we uh, we um, we calibrate our our instrument. So basically, it's calibrated between air, which uh, which is known that uh, permittivity value is one, and also for and water, which uh, uh, has a permittivity value of um, eighty. Um, I show here um, how the the instrument looks like. As I mentioned previously, it can be used for in vivo measurement, and this is the parking base to protect the sensor. And also, we have uh, an in vitro stand, uh, so it measure it could be uh, it could be used for in vitro measurement, uh, like penetration dynamics. Uh, this is a, a sort of a screenshot of the of the of the software. So uh, you can um, measure uh, snapshots, but also you can uh, um, do some uh, burst measurements, or you can also record um, movies. And you uh, also can see you can choose a region of interest, and you can also compare the whole image. And uh, what you the values you get is the uh, the order readings more like it is the uh, live uh, mean permittivity. You can also have a histogram display, and also uh, if you can see here on the on the software, so you get uh, numerical uh, results of uh, mean uh, permittivity and uh, standard deviation. So on top is is for the whole image, and at the bottom is for region of interest. Um, at the beginning of the uh, of the presentation, and in fact the title of the uh, uh, of the presentation, uh, it's about the uh, permittivity filtering for hydration measurements, uh, which is a very uh, powerful tool of uh, of our software. So uh, basically, what it's doing is to uh, remove. Um, low permittivity uh, pixels values to correct for uh, bad contacts, lines or wrinkles. Uh, you can also remove the uh, high permittivity pixels to correct for surface water from topical products, uh, sweat gland activities. And um, in the uh, 
uh, in the software, uh, you could see that the, the filter pixels are uh, shown in gray. And also you have, you can control uh, your filtering uh, settings by uh, choosing between a minimum value and the maximum value. Um, here it's uh, an example of uh, a burst. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Here it's an example of a burst and uh, video analysis and uh, also um, a short presentation of how the um, permittivi uh, permittivity filtering is uh, it's working. But I'll give you uh, some examples in the next slides. Uh, so th this uh, uh, this uh, tool, uh, this um, permittivity filtering, uh, as I mentioned, is used for remo uh, removing artifacts. And in fact, by removing this, uh, the artifacts, you can uh, get um, the true value of hydration. And there are some examples here, like curved uh, surface. So this is a bad contact uh, with the uh, skin. Uh, these are uh, this is a hairy skin, so you can see the dark lines here. Uh, then you have surface water, like uh, sweat gland activity, and these are bright uh, spots. And um, this is the, the gap between, uh, between the lips. But an example of uh, of using the uh, and the, the power uh, the power of this uh, uh, of this filter is uh, hydration measurement of a curved uh, surface. And uh, here we have an example. So this is an, an image of a thumb joint, and it has areas of bad contact. So these are the uh, the black. Uh, black areas. Uh, you have. Uh, you also have some lines, wrinkles, and hair. These are the these uh, black lines here. And also, you have a, a surface water uh, or, uh, from insensible perspiration, which are these um, bright, bright dots. And uh, here you can uh, see that uh, basically the the brown is the whole uh, the hydration. Uh, of the whole uh, of the whole image, and uh, with the green is the uh, here is a, a region of interest, and you uh, you get the readings from uh, from the region of interest as well. By using the filtering, then you remove the uh, the low values of permittivity, uh, which uh, is a bad contact, and also you can remove the. Uh, uh, the high values of uh, permittivity, uh, which uh, were these bright areas, so the, the, the surface water, and by eliminating these, you get a more realistic measurement uh, of um, mean, mean hydration. So you can see here that the, the filter, the pixels which you filter are, um, are now gray. Another example is uh, hydration measurement of uh, of scalp uh, without shaving. Um, so these are uh, this is just an example of two different uh, images with hairy scalp. Um, so basically, where is the dark red? Uh, it means that there is no uh, no contact. Then you have some um, fine lines where these uh, represent the hair, and the bright uh, the bright areas uh, represent the uh, the scalp contact. Um, after you use the you use the filtering, you um, remove the uh, the low uh, values of permittivity, where is, there is no uh, no contact between the uh, uh, the sensor and the skin, and by um, by removing uh, these low values, uh, then you will get a change in your hydration. And although there are uh, not many uh, pixels, um, you can uh, get a better uh, value of the hydration, a real reading of the hydration than before. So you can see that after fi filtering, the bad contacts become uh, become gray, and also you can see in this histogram. So this part is removed uh, from the readings. Uh, another example is a correction for skin uh, sensor contact. Uh, so uh, here it's um, 
a female uh, boulder forearm uh, image where you you have the whole image and also uh, we have chosen a, a region of uh, interest. Again, the bad contact between the sensor and the skin uh, is represented by this uh, dark um, region. And also you have uh, hairs, these uh, black lines. Uh, and here is the histogram uh, uh, before filtering. And after you uh, you filter the um, uh, the values of the uh, of the permittivity. Uh, so basically, you um, you choose and you remove the the, uh, the pixel with the bad uh, at a lower uh, lower range, uh, which shows that it has a, a, a bad contact. After the filtering, you are you will see a change in hydration. Uh, so the mean hydration increases for uh, from 3.9 to um, to six, and for the region of interest from four to uh, to seven. Um, so basically, uh, in general, the um, so the uh, permittivity filtering corrects for bad contact and surface water under user control. So basically, uh, you as a user, you can choose. Um, uh, the domain you want to analyze the hydration. Another example is for correction for skin surface water. Uh, so you have, uh, let's say, sweat gland activity. Um, and here is like represented um, by these very bright uh, spots. Um, we also, we already, there it was a, a region of bad contact which um, we already removed, so you can see that uh, is a gray, uh, a, gray, a, a gray area which was removed, and so is this part. And also, you can see in, in the histogram it will be uh, this uh, on the left hand side. You see the idea that is darker the image of the histogram, and after and then you remove the. Um, uh, pixel which gives you readings for the uh, the su surface water, um, and in this case uh, we uh, we choose values uh, higher than uh, 60 to remove, and um, uh, we notice that um, the uh, region of interest hydration changes from 17 to 10, and for the whole image the hydration changes from 12 to to 9. Um, so again. Um, uh, the permittivity filtering uh, is very useful because you remove uh, non-stratum corneal pixels and uh, then uh, you um, give uh, you get more accurate readings of the hydration. Um, I reached the, the conclusion, so I hope I'm uh, I'm in time. Um, so basically. Um, we can see how powerful this permittivity uh, filter is uh, because uh, the permittivity filter is a useful tool for selecting pixels within a range of uh, values uh, between and including um, permittivity, um, a minimum and maximum permittivity. Uh, then it can be so this can be used to remove the artifacts of bad contacts, lines, wrinkles, surface water, and uh, after filtering the uh, the mean uh, permittivity readout of the selected pixels will better represent the permittivity hydration of the sample material, and also the permittivity uh, filtering corrects for uh, bad contacts where the um, value of the permittivity is low and surface wa water. Um, where the uh, value of the permittivity is high under user control. Uh, so, as I mentioned uh, previously, uh, you have you choose you have the option to choose the values of the uh, of the filtering. So it's nothing the software, let's say, imposes. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, my email address is also uh, on the screen. So if you have any questions, please contact me. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Laurie, for this presentation. I think we have a, a question from Stefan Bielfeld from Prodem. Could we measure hair density or cone sweat glands by use of the filter? You mean how much hair you have on uh, a, cer on a certain area? Is this right? Yes. yes. Uh, 
so basically, what what you do with with uh, with this filter, you just uh, remove, let's say, the the bad contacts for sweat gland activity. So. Um, I'm not so sure. So problem what I I mean with hair de hair density, I don't know. So we have never tried. But with sweat gland activity, I'm just thinking that if you have if you remove the uh, or you keep the, the yeah you keep the values of the epsilon which are um, of which are high, then it gives you more readings of the sweat gland activity than the hydration itself. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Marie, for uh, this presentation. And we will send the, the PDF of the presentation to the, the participants so they can... They can yeah, uh, but also, oh, so, sorry, also Stefan can, can write to me and then we can think about, um, you, you know, and can think or try to do some measurements here in, uh, in our lab and see if it works. Okay, yeah. we will go further with uh, Mrs. Uh, Annie Jane from CIDP. Dr. Annie Jane uh, is uh, the scientific director and principal investigator of CIDP in India. And she completed her postgraduate studies in dermatology from Gautai Medical College and Hospital in Assam. She specializes in all types of skin, hair, and nail disorders, sexually transmitted infections, leprosy, and dermatosurgical procedures. On cosmetology fronts, she regularly undertakes diverse cauterization, mesotherapy, etc. And Dr. Jane has written and presented various papers and articles on dermatology and venerology. She also actively participates in health camps workshops for unprivileged members of the society. Welcome, uh, Anne. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Anne. Hello, everyone. I hope my screen is visible to everyone. Yes, that's perfect. So today I'll take you through an overview of most commonly used methodologies in ex vivo and in vivo models for claim substantiation in skin hydration. Before we proceed, I'll just like to give you a quick overview of CIDP. CIDP stands for Center International Redevelopment Pharmaceutique. It was established in the year 2004 and is an international contract research organization that carries out high performance research and development activities for pharmaceutical, medical device, nutraceutical, and cosmetic industries. We have our presence worldwide with the headquarters located at Mauritius and other centers located at Romania, India, and Brazil. Human skin, as we all know, is the largest organ of the body, accounting for 6% of the total body weight and an area of 1.8 meters square. It helps to prevent excessive water loss from the body and provides protective functions against microorganisms, UV rays, toxic substances, and mechanical damage, amongst others. It provides an effective barrier function, which is mainly due to the structure of stratum corneum, the outermost layer composed of keratinized cells called corneocytes embedded in the lipid matrix. Any alteration in the stratum corneum lipid composition can result in skin disorders with barrier defects such as atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, and ichthyosis. Hydration is a key aspect of skin that influences its physical and mechanical properties. And indices such as transepidermal water loss and skin hydration have been widely used in evaluating the skin barrier function. Now we move on to assessment of skin moisture level using the ex vivo methods where human skin explants model can be used for assessing numerous biomarkers implicated in hydration evaluation, including Claudin-1, Occludin-1, Hyaluronic Acid, Natural Moisturizing Factor, Glycosaminoglycans, and Pellagrin. At CIDP, we have a biosafety level 2 labs where studies on human skin explants can be performed. 
Different biomarkers can be monitored, including biomarkers implicated in cell cohesion and cell-to-cell -cell junction proteins such as claudin-1, occludin-1, and integrin. Now we move on to the in vivo models. So at CIDB, we routinely perform various studies for skin hydration and moisturizing efficacy. The commonly used instruments are corneometer, tevometer, and moisturometer. Corneometer or CM825 determines the humidity level of the most superficial cutaneous layer of the stratum corneum. The action principle of corneometer is based on the modification of electrical capacities of the detector. Basically, the surface of the measurement head in contact with the skin modifies its electrical capacity according to the humidity level of the stratum corneum. While corneometry is a simple, rapid, and effective method for indirect assessment of skin moisture and hydration, it, however, cannot be used for distinguishing the hydration levels of the various layers and sublayers of the human skin. Next is the tevometer, which helps us to assess the transepidermal water loss. That is the amount of water that passively evaporates through skin to the external environment due to water vapor pressure gradient on both sides of the skin barrier and is used to assess the skin barrier functions. The diffusion gradient has a flux of 0.5 to 1 milligram per centimeter square per hour, which can lead to a total loss of approximately 500 ml of water from the skin on a daily basis. Assessment of skin moisture using Moisture Meter D is based on the capacitive measurement principle and can measure changes in tissue water content of dermis and process is totally non-invasive. This instrument generates a high frequency, low power electromagnetic wave, which the tissue is exposed to. And the reflected electromagnetic wave is then registered and the obtained value is a dielectric constant expressed in percentage, which is proportional to the water content to be measured in the tissue. This value increases with the increasing water content of the tissue. Now, these are few illustrative images captured under cross-polarized and standard lighting modes using the video dermatoscope. And these images can be further used for image analysis purposes before and after product application. So these are few moisturizing study designs which we routinely perform at CIDP. The short-term moisturizing studies can be performed by assessing at various time points, starting from baseline, T immediate, which is three minutes post-product application, one hour, two hour, four hours, and so on up to 12, 24, and 48 hours. Here, the IP application is done under control conditions at the center, and we do have facilities where the subjects can stay at the center for up to 48 to 72 hours if needed. So we do have facilities for providing them with refreshments and entertainment as well as uh, areas for relaxing. And this helps us in doing long term moisturizing studies at the center under control conditions. The various instrumental evaluations which are done in such kind of studies are corneometer, moisture meter D, and the population size generally includes 33 subjects with dry to very dry skin on the volar surface of the forearms. Long-term moisturizing studies can be done by assessment kinetics at baseline, day 7, 14, 28, and 56. Here, the IP application is done under normal conditions of use, that is by the subjects themselves at their respective homes. Instrumental evaluations which can be done are corneometer, moisture meter D. In addition, we can also include tevometer to assess the skin repair benefits of the product. And the population can include 20 to 30 subjects with dry to very dry skin, having a corneometer value of 35 arbitrary units or less. These quorum analysis can also be performed for assessing the moisturizing effect after multiple product applications. Here, the corneocytes are collected before and after product application, and these d squams are further analyzed using the QuantiSwarm software. So this is a graphical representation of the data obtained from short-term moisturizing studies. Here in the graph, we can see that two products, product A and B, were investigated in this study, 
and were compared with an untreated site on the forearm. And as represented in the graph, we can see there was an increase in more than 133% of moisturizing values after product application at the T immediate kinetic. Thereafter, the hydration values decreased over a period of time up to 48 hours. However, as compared to the untreated zone, we could still see a significant increase in the hydration values for both the treated zones as compared to the untreated area. So this study was performed on 33 volunteers on the forearms and had shown good efficacy results for both the test products. So with these kind of studies, we can do various claims such as boost hydration, whereby if there's a significant increase of at least 30% from the baseline after one hour, then we can claim this product has the efficacy of boosting hydration. Optimal hydration, if a significant increase of up to 20% is present for up to four hours post-product application. Intense hydration is claimed if there's a statistically significant improvement of at least 50% at T1 hour and at least 20% at T6 hours. So in this, both the conditions should be met to claim this substantiation. Extra hydration overnight is claimed if a significant increase by at least 10% is observed at T24 hours. The product's capacity to restore the skin water balance is claimed if the average of coniometer readings is significantly higher than 45 arbitrary units at all time points. So in addition to the instrumental evaluations, we do have possibilities of clinical assessments by dermatologists and self-assessment questionnaires, which can be added to the various study designs discussed. The clinical assessments can be done by grading for skin smoothness, tactile roughness, the overall dry skin score and specified symptom sum score, which is as per the IMCO guidelines. IMCO stands for the European Group on Efficacy Measurement and Evaluation of Cosmetics and Other Products. Here, the dryness is measured from a 0 to 4 scale, 0 signifying absence of dryness and 4 signifies very severe or heavy scale production. For specified symptom sum score, we do a grading for scaling, roughness, redness and cracks of skin from 0 to 4. Again, dehydration can also be assessed using the skin turgor test or the pinch test. And in addition, we can have sub subjective self-assessment questionnaires for both efficacy and safety assessments. NRS8 score can be added along with the scales for evaluating discomfort sensation and repairing efficacy of the test products. The safety assessment is generally done by monitoring the adverse events and local intolerances reported during the study. So this is another study design which was conducted at the CIDP India Center where we had demonstrated deep hydration property of a test product. So in addition to the clinical assessment by dermatologists and the corneometer and tevameter readings, we had also performed a tape stripping technique followed by corneometer assessments. So here we had selected two test sites on one forearm in a dimension of three into three centimeters square whereby one test site was left untreated and the other test site was treated with the investigational product. Baseline readings were captured for each test site before product application and product application was done only on the treated site. Thereafter, we waited for 20 to 30 minutes post product application and corneometer readings were done again on both the test sites T1 and T2. Tape strippings were done multiple times like three, six and 10 times. And after respective times of tape stripping, we had performed corneometer readings on both the treated and the untreated site. So this helped us to compare uh, the hydration levels in both the treated and the untreated zone and thereby helped us to claim the deep hydration property of the test product. We also performed studies uh, in collaboration with Newton Technologies. This was done uh, in association with Newton Technologies where we had done creation of moisture map for facial region. Uh, the hydration levels were assessed using corneometer in a 3D model. Here, 20 measurement points were taken in a randomized split phase and various assessments were done at various time points at day zero, T immediate, day one and day 14. 
The 20 measurements which were performed were on the standardized regions as defined in the table. And the repositioning mask was used for each subject to ensure that the measurements were always performed at the same area on all subsequent visits. So this is how the 20 measurements were captured on a split phase uh, study design. And here we can see the graphical representation. Uh, so the yellow areas on the face define the dry areas of the face. And at day zero T zero, we do see that the dryness on face was much higher compared to D zero T immediate, which was post product application. And thereafter, the dryness was further reduced at day one and day 14. So as we know that the mechanical properties of the skin, such as the strength, flexibility and elasticity are also affected by skin hydration. So the standard claims which we generally make for hydrating products include improved skin texture, soft and supple skin, even skin tone with improved skin radiance, instant hydration or moisturization, and long lasting hydration or moisturization for up to 24 to 48 hours. With this, I conclude my presentation and will be happy to answer to your queries, if any. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation, Annie. So maybe uh, Stefan, uh, Annie, uh, Laurie and Elodie, you can put your uh, camera on. Here I am. <laughs> OK, great. Hello. So, uh, who would like to to answer this uh, question about uh, the wordings of moisturizing, moisturization, and hydration? I already wrote something that moisturization, hydration. These are wordings of let's say more used uh, in, uh, to to claim things and uh, uh, usually it is avoided to speak is it more water in the skin less water more water in the cells so to the whole question for me is skin good skin hydration is mainly good barrier function uh, the right ph distribution and the stratum corneum uh, and especially also the the availability of NMF of natural moisturization factors in the cells that keep the moisture exactly at that point which is needed at a specific depth so at the surface very low hydration and very low moisture and then the gradient is going up and up and up as i showed until 65 to 70 percent of water in the cells and too much water would uh, would mean the skin is getting weak and swollen and uh, too less water would mean uh, the cells are dried out are and then flaking starts too early and, and the the cells uh, desquamate not in single cells but in large flakes and that is what we call dry skin then so dry skin is a desquamation uh, problem and uh, not mainly uh, the more water you have in the skin, the better. So th this would not be true. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, Elodie or Annie, would you like to answer this question? The difference between hydration and moisturization? Yes. I have nothing to add to what uh, Stefan just said. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you. Um, and uh, a question from Alexandra uh, Baco. She asked, uh, how many volunteers do you recommend for uh, corneometry and transepidermal water loss testing? And this is a question for all speakers. How many volunteers? So generally for claim substantiation of uh, skin hydration and uh, skin barrier repair. Ah, we don't understand you. Uh, is your mic micro on? Yes, it's on. Can you hear me? Yes. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for claim substantiation of skin hydration and barrier repair effect, we generally include volunteers like 
approximately 25 to 35 volunteers and uh, they do we have a requirement of having dry to very dry skin at the inclusion and uh, can be uh, can be added more if needed but depends on the kinetics as well the kinetics of assessment okay uh, I will just add uh, one one uh, information for for hydration uh, uh, evaluation. It seems to me that uh, a period of washout is very important before the first application of the of the pre of the product you want to 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 test. Stefan, you want to say yeah, something? Yeah, I can I can agree to that. The washout is very important, and a standardized cleansing procedure during the study would help a lot to to avoid uh, that uh, high variation comes from different uh, treatments of washing products in the study. And the number is fine to me. We need more than twenty for sure because that is the 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 a question of individual scatter and also intra individual scatter. But if we have a direct comparison intra individual from one arm with the other or one yeah. face side with the other you need less volunteers. If you have panels to compare, you need at least 50 subjects. Okay. Um, uh, we have another question. Um, about what what do you think about uh, it's a question from Maud Benoit and she was uh, wondering um uh, what we what we can mention about the skin barrier protection in terms of claims so generally for skin barrier repair effect claims we do include teva meter assessments for <coughs> sure along with the corneometer and uh, in addition, we do have clinical scorings done by dermatologists. The various grades, which I had already mentioned during the presentation, as per the EMCO guidelines, we can include the overall dry skin score and the specified symptom sum scores and can add subjective self-evaluation questionnaires. So it's basically instrumental plus clinical and subjective assessment, which can help us to overall claim uh, the skin barrier repair effect. Okay. May I add something? Yes. So uh, we usually do uh, a challenging to the barrier, and that is uh, something like using a washing product like sodium lauryl sulfate uh, or uh, doing skin stripping so that the barrier is really challenged. And then we look at the kinetics of repair. So then you can use a lot of different methods to assess the barrier with Raman or with corneometer and it also TEWL is the most uh, known parameter for that. But uh, the, the, sh the challenge of the barrier is important because it is also age dependent. So if you have old, uh, an old panel with older people, the repair is clearly slower and it could be improved. If you work, uh, and it might, has no ma uh, reason to make it with children or something because then the, the barrier restores very quickly. But we have the problem in older skin that the barrier repair is slowed and, and there the products are helpful, of course, and we can make good claim support in this field. Okay. Um, and uh, um, there is a, another question from uh, Leanne Raff, and she was asking a question about uh, what scales do you use to determine dry and very dry? And are, there, are these visual scales or equipment measurement scales? So, of course, we do use... Uh, I'm sorry, please, uh, Stephen, go ahead. No, you you can start if you want, please. And thank you. So we do use clinical visual scales, and in addition, we do use the corneometer readings, which is the arbitrary units. And generally, as per the published articles, anything uh, a value of less than thirty arbitrary units of uh, 
corneometer readings are considered as very dry skin. 30 to 40 is uh, defined as dry skin and anything above 45 is considered as a normal and well hydrated skin. So these are the values which we generally use for inclusion criteria for including subjects with dry to very dry skin. I fully agree, Annie, because I was involved in this uh, round robin test uh, with nine test centers assessing clinically dry skin and measure in parallel corneometer. And especially for the corneometer, we have therefore a good uh, good data. What is dry skin? What is very dry skin? What is normal skin? And this this publication is already done, I think, in the 19th of the last century, but it is still very much cited because it's giving the most robust idea of what is really dry skin when you measure with these instruments. So quite a good, it was the uh, German um, scientific cosmetic, uh, so, so the DGK group where, where I'm a member in, where we performed this big ring study with nine centers. So it's, it's, it's still actual. Thank you very much. Um To, to know um, what's your view if uh, forearm hydration results be used for scalp, face, makeup, lips, lip products about hydration. What, what do you think about this, uh, this uh, uh, site uh, evaluation and claim? I would I would always claim uh, when measuring the correct site, and sometimes it's very diff difficult. And then you have to have a good explanation why your data is valid also uh, for the other side. Especially we see if we compare forearm and face, usually the better results we get with the forearm, but our products are then used in the face. And however, it should be for good claim support, it should be done in situ in the right uh, area. And, yes. and therefore it should be done then on face. Yes, I do agree with Stephen because uh, hydration values vary from mm -hmm. one side to the other. And if we are looking at lip products, it will be ideal if we do the evaluations on lips instead of forearms, because yes. eventually if the product needs to be used on the lips, mm -hmm. then of course we have to assess the efficacy as well as the safety of the products on both on the treated side. Yes, maybe I can. Yes, thank you very much. Maybe I can just add a, a comment on that. I think that for claim substantiation, it's uh, I agree with you. And when it comes to screen uh, different products that we want to test under the exact same conditions, then the forearms can be or another part of the of the body can be easier to handle in a clinical protocol where you want to compare product between each others uh, before you go to the uh, yes the eventual site of application. Of course. Yes. Yeah, of course. Um, another question from uh, Filippo. Uh, do you have a trick to measure skin hydration after applying hyaluronate and uh, no filler? <laughs> you yes. mean hyaluronic acid or what was the question? Yes, um, yeah, that uh, after applying hyaluronate I, and I, I, I'm understand it was uh, linked to hyaluronic acid. I will say that uh, it uh, it depends of the um, the weight of the of the type of the hyaluronic acid if it's a uh, low or or a big uh, big type of hyaluronic acid. What what do you think? On my side, I wouldn't be able to answer the question, I think, very uh, deeply, but I would say that maybe in the case you are afraid that the measurement should be misleading because there is an ingredient in the product that itself may be measured uh, instead of uh, skin hydration, let's say, uh, then you can use maybe other alternative approaches to assess the skin surface state, maybe instead of measuring uh, um, I, I, but I have no uh, uh, knowledge of uh, what happens when you put uh, hyaluronic acid on the skin in terms of corneometry or transepidermal retolus. That may be what you can maybe more 
answer uh, in the clinical testing lab? Yes. I can add, there's a big hype about hyaluronic acid, but hyaluronic acid is a, is a, in 4% in the dermis to moisten the collagen, to have a gel structure of the dermis. And we put it on the skin surface and say it is a great uh, skin hydration molecule, but usually the molecule is much too long to, to go even into stratum corneum. So it gives a film on the surface. And you can put, of course, shorter wave uh, uh, chain length into your cosmetic products and uh, at a specific chain length that might fit well and be then a, a normal moisturizer of a cream, I would say. But if, if the chain length is too short, it could also be irritative. That is also known. Yes. I agree with what Stefan has mentioned. And in addition, just in case we have injectable fillers or hyaluronic acid, which needs to be tested, uh, we do have facilities uh, to be done on human skin explants, you know, whereby uh, it can be injected and the corneometer measurements can be repeated at various time points and there are published studies where they have done the studies on human skin explants for different fillers and hyaluronic acids. Uh, in addition, the biomarkers can be assessed to assess the hydration levels. So yes, there is a possibility for uh, injectable fillers to be tested even uh, in labs using the skin explant methods. Okay. And uh... Um, I think we don't have uh, other questions. I will say that uh, um, since uh, I, I, biometrological uh, evaluation are really are very interesting to to quantify and visualize, visualize the hydration uh, uh, effect of products. But I think uh, it's always uh, very interesting to get the feedback of the of the users, of the subjects uh, through uh, auto-evaluation questionnaire or also through uh, sensory uh, evaluation. So even for barrier function, because barrier function is linked to the soothing effect, to the sensitivity of the skin, to uh, and, and, uh, and I think it's always very interesting to have these uh, complementary um, uh, elements from from the the subject themselves. Right. So uh, we have comments about uh, the presentation. Uh, be sure that uh, uh, we will uh, send you. Uh, to, uh, we will send the, the participants the presentation of uh, our great uh, speakers. Uh, today's speakers with their email. So if you have uh, other questions, don't hesitate to, to contact them. And uh, thank you very much um, um, to your great presentation, giving a, a nice overview of the what, what is today uh, hydration and moisturizing claim evaluation with uh, from the more classical like Corneometer to high tech and nomadic, like uh, uh, the skin cam or like the Raman for a very high tech and very uh, specific quantification and, and with the permittivity uh, filtering of the bio system. So thank you very much. And uh, um, please uh, um, don't hesitate to send us questions on, uh, on skin offs and if you don't find uh, your way on the platform. Thank you very much and see you soon and have a nice uh, afternoon or evening or day. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.